guest seat on a fan TV, I'm outside the Riverside. We've been beaten 1 0 at home off Bristol City. I have Stanley with me, a Bristol City fan. Stanley, stop smiling, mate. It's my turn. I remember at Ashton Gate, it was your turn to glow, and I was smiling then anyway. Um, great result. Who'd have thought it? I actually wasn't going to come up tonight. I thought there's no point, it's too far. Three hour train journey. I've got to get the coach back, which is six hours. But I said to my friends on uh, Saturday, if we beat Sheffield United, as a joke, you know, because we're not going to beat them, I'll go Borough. I'll go Borough. Full time whistle on Saturday, it's 3 2 to us. Suddenly I'm looking at late trains and coaches all the way up to Borough. And again, somehow, Lee Johnson's magic, I've, I've gone to an away game that I didn't think we'd win. I was hoping for a point. We've come away with three points. Let's go back to August or early September, mm. whenever it was, we were down at Ashton Gate. We spoke. And similar to the Norwich fans, you were going through a rough period. It was only the start of the season. We absolutely played fantastic that day. And you were worried about staying in this division. There were quite a lot of City fans. There was, there was a City fan only in October that was predicting us to finish bottom three. Um, I think a lot of Bristol City fans after the Borough game thought that Borough would be a top two team. Everyone thought, there you go, they look good. Asom Malonga's class. They're going to spend big. Aidan Flint looks great. Everyone was saying how, what a great signing Aidan Flint is. It's strange, isn't it, over the course of the season, how things happen. I think... Uh, Borough fans have got more and more uh, bored and frustrated with Tony Pulis football. Tony Pulis was a Bristol City manager um, a couple of decades ago. Our striker, Famer Jeju, cost a third of what Asom Belonga cost. A lot of Bristol City fans think he's a waste of money. But every Borough fan I've spoken to tonight says how good he was in, in comparison. Um, yeah, who would have expected us to be above you uh, after that game back in September? I was surprised were you when the Bristol City fans started singing about Pulis' style of football and... I'd say the majority of the Riverside joined in. Was it? Was that a shock? <laughs> I knew that we'd start singing it at some point because every time we play Tony Pulis, he gets pelters. Um, I've heard a few things about the atmosphere at, at the Riverside. I heard it's quite um, toxic. I actually thought it was uh, more calm than I thought, to be honest. I thought, actually, the Borough fans made an all right amount of noise. That, whoever that guy with the drum was has clearly got the biggest arms in the northeast because he didn't stop banging that bloody thing, did he? And you guys started a couple of songs. There was a bit of a... Uh, a flashpoint where there was sort of some handbags. I think that got the bar fans roaring. And I think on another day, you guys could have got something out of the game because you hit the post twice, a couple of saves from our keeper. It, it wasn't an, a, it wasn't a comfortable one 0 win, I'd say. Now, like you say, you've moved into a playoff position. Well, how, where do you see Bristol City's season going now? It's, I think, you do have quite a difficult run in, don't you? Well, we've had two games of this so-called difficult run in with Sheffield United and Borough, and we've got six points. Um, we've got Wigan, and then we've got Derby still to come, Villa. I think, it's, you know, I, I sound like a player, don't I? We just take it one game at a time as Bristol City fans. Can we win this game? Bloody hell, we can. Let's go on to the next one. I think that formula has, has worked us well so far this season. Charlie, thanks for coming on Borough Fan TV. Brilliant, mate.